Hi there, this is David here from CADSessions.com. In this short video, we're going to demonstrate how to use the sweep command in Onshape by modeling a step railing used in a swimming pool. This is a good but simple example to demonstrate the sweep feature. If you find this tutorial helpful, please thumbs up this video or subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer. So here's a picture of the railing at a swimming pool made from stainless steel tube that we're going to model. You can find a link to the image in the description. So the sweep command is very useful when you have a certain profile, or we can call it a cross section, be it circular, rectangular, or almost any closed contour for that matter, and you want to route or pipe that cross section along some predefined path. Here are a couple examples. First, we have an O-ring that fits inside this rectangular groove. The O-ring has a circular cross section and it's swept in this 3D model around a rectangular path. Second, we have this copper tubing pressed into this heatsink. The tubing also has a circular cross section and a path snakes through the slots of the heatsink. And third, we have this vase the cross-section is a circle, and the swept path is a helix that runs down the sides of the vase. Notice that in this instance, the path is being cut or material is being removed versus the first two examples where material is being added. To create a sweep feature or part, there are three steps involved. First, sketch the path. This can be a 2D or 3D sketch. Second, sketch the profile. This will be a 2D sketch. And third, sweep the profile along the path. Okay, back to our part. As you can see, I am inside of Onshape already, and I've imported this picture into my Onshape document by clicking on this plus sign at the bottom here and selecting Import. To take it a step further, I'm going to import this picture into my sketch so I can use it as a reference. To start our sketch, click on Sketch, and we'll select the front plane for our sketch plane. We'll click up here and select Insert Image. This dialog pops up, and we need to select the image we want to insert into this sketch instance. After I select the image, a message appears to Draw Image Rectangle. So I'm just going to draw out a rectangle where I want the image placed. Okay, good. Let's proceed. As usual, I'm going to come here and hide all these planes to unclutter my workspace by clicking on these eye icons. Okay, now we can start our sketch. I want to be normal to the sketch plane, so I can right-click on the workspace area and select View Normal to Sketch Plane. Okay, so I don't have actual measurements for this part we're modeling, but my goal is not to be accurate in that respect I just want to demonstrate how the sweep feature works. So first we'll draw the sweep path. We need to sketch the path that we're going to sweep our profile around. Select the line command. From the origin, we'll draw a vertical line up here and estimate its length to be four feet. You'll notice that this converts to 48 since the document units are set to inches. Let's continue drawing. We'll add curved features later now I just want to get the rough shape of the railing. So the line comes up, then there's this angled section pointing away, then a horizontal section coming back, and then another vertical section that comes back down here. Now let's just drag the segments around a little bit to get the rough shape. Okay, good. Now let's add the fillets. I'm going to click on the fillet button here, and select this top corner. I have it set to six inches. We'll go around and add fillets to these two other corners. We can do a little more adjusting of the sketch segments by dragging them. Let's set the angle between the vertical section of the sloped line. We'll make it a round number, say 60 degrees. That looks about right. And if I set this angle, the dimension will show up as gray, meaning it's a driven dimension. The fact that this is a vertical line 
this is a horizontal line and that this angle is 60 degrees will force this angle to be 30 degrees. So that's why it's driven by other dimensions or constraints in the sketch. Also, let's come back here and redefine what this 48 inch dimension applies to. Notice that currently it's applying to the original sharp corner, but I want it to apply to the actual top edge of the railing. So I'm going to delete this dimension and draw a horizontal construction line that's tangent to this curve. So select line, make it a construction line and draw a horizontal line here, making sure the horizontal relation appears when you draw it. Then select the line and the curve, make sure you have a small two next to cursor and set a tangent relation to each other. Now I can set a dimension for my original intent from the bottom to the physical top edge of the railing. We'll make it four feet again. Now notice that this horizontal line is a construction line used for defining the sketch, but will not be part of our path that we're sweeping around. Okay, what else can we define in the sketch? We can set the separation between these two legs. Let's make this 12 inches. Similarly, Let's say that the separation between the ground and this horizontal section is also 12 inches. One more adjustment. Let's go back and change these fillet radii from six to 10 inches. Okay, I think our sketch looks very similar to the picture now. I'll click the green button to accept the sketch. So we're done with our path. We're ready to sketch the profile. In this case, I could simply just select the top plane to sketch on since our path actually starts on the origin and we'd be good to go. But this won't always be the case. Sometimes your path will start at a point where you don't have a plane already. So I'll show you how to handle that common situation. So let's assume we need to actually create a new plane here because we don't already have one. So we'll come here and click this plane button. A dialog pops up. Open this drop down to select the type of plane you want to create. In our case, we want a point normal. A curve point would also work, but is intended for curves instead of straight sketch segments. Anyway, we'll choose point normal. Make sure this input box is blue and we'll go ahead and select our entity inputs. So select our point and then select this line since we want our plane to be normal to it. And the newly created plane appears. Okay, click accept. So we have our plane. Now we can sketch the profile. Click on sketch, select the new plane. We'll draw our circle and set its diameter to be three inches. Accept the sketch to exit. And all that's left is to do the sweep. So we're going to create a solid and it's going to be a new solid. For the first input box, faces and sketch regions to sweep, we'll select the circle we just created. Then the next input box turns red, so we need to click on it to activate it. We just need to input the sweep path. There are two ways to go about this. We could start selecting the path segments one by one like this. Just make sure you start where the profile is. But that's a little tedious, so I'm actually going to show you another way of doing this. I can instead come here to the feature tree, and as I hover over sketch one, it highlights both in the feature tree and in the workspace. If I click on it, the whole sketch will be used as an input for the sweep path. Okay, that was much easier. We can also move this slider to change the opacity of the preview. And notice how the construction line in the sketch is not being used in the sweep path. Click accept. Now to compare our model to the original picture, come here to the feature tree, hover over sketch one, which is grayed out, unhide it by clicking on the eye icon. Okay, it looks pretty good.